What's up everybody? I'm doing a um, tutorial on attaching custom cut end sheets to uh, uh, bobbles. Now this could work even if you want to upgrade uh, the current uh, bobble you have. It's not a rebind. If you just want to put a cover uh, sheet over what's currently there as an end sheet, you could use the same method. Uh, let me show you uh, what you're going to need to do this. So I'm going to sit down. All right, so um, just to reiterate, uh, this is what we're gonna be working on. Uh, this is an Omega cover that I'm repurposing and I put a new uh, large print thin line text block in it. Kind of like my Omega 2.0 and uh, I've already done the front end sheet and it's for a person so it's got their name on it so I'm gonna leave that off. Uh, but I still gotta do the back end sheet. So we're gonna cover this old tab that, that was attached to the block and then cover the old end sheet okay and uh, you'll see what that looks like so let's just lay this down uh, kind of faced up with it open so we can get our measurements next you'll need your uh, your material for your end sheet uh, I'm using a cardstock this is a really nice cardstock I normally use a texture cardstock but this was a uh, a, uh, a different a little thicker card stock uh, that was going to be for the purpose of this uh, Bible that's a gift uh, So but you need some kind of end sheet material and you can basically use anything graphic paper Anything because uh, all you're going to do is cut it to shape uh, around the corners and then glue it in place so but uh, Card stocks thick enough that when you put the glue on there. It won't seep through the other side. It won't change it won't get really wavy, uh, so that's why you use thicker cardstock. All right, and I use a a, uh, a cutting board, just like a, a kitchen cutting board. You'll need two rulers. You could probably use two 18-inch rulers. You'll need at least one 18-inch ruler because there'll be a few cuts that might exceed the 12-inch, depending on how big of a book. Uh, in sheet you're cutting or how big of a because there's some sheets that aren't the eight and a half by 11 they'll come in a one foot by one foot section so it's cutting really close using a 12 inch ruler on those long sections so anyway you'll need a bone folder or teflon folder or something to push the in sheet around the tab to make sure it seals up really well you'll need scissors these are some really good sharp scissors and uh, and you will also need, uh, I use contact cement. Uh, this is the Walmart brand contact cement and it has been kind of my go-to for uh, stuff like this. Now, a lot of people don't like how it smells. Now, usually that smell goes away uh, fairly quickly, maybe in a couple days. Um, so, uh, but it's not going to be odorless like a bookbinding glue, but it's going to be about 10 times as strong as bookbinding glue. Now, I'll leave a link in the description for a list of tools, just a bunch of general tools for bookbinding, and these will be on that list. So now let me get myself organized. I'm going to bring the book over here, and I'm going to measure from this, uh, this hinge all the way to the end of the sheet. I'm not gonna take into account the, the rounded edges yet, and I'll show you why. So my measurements will be, for this sheet, it will be six and one eighth. I don't know if you can see that, but six and one eighth by nine and one eighth. Okay, so six and one eighth by nine and one eighth. Now I've got my measurements, now it's time to cut the the card stop. So I will usually cut the long axis first. So I'm gonna cut the nine and an eight first. And using this size card uh, uh, cutting board is it gets pretty challenging, especially if you have a larger sheet of paper. That's why I typically only use the eight and a half by 11 because it's it barely fits on this cutting board, but you can really use any of them. All right, so if I'm cutting long, I'll, uh, I'll usually use the, uh, the long ruler. So I'll, I'll put it on one side 
And I'm going to also, you, know, you need one other thing too. You're also going to need a rotary cutter, okay, uh, like this, because you're going to line up uh, your lines and then cut them. So that's uh, and that'll also be on that list. So we're getting a nine and one eight measurement. So you'll see I'll hold right on the mark back here with my thumb. Make sure it's nice and straight, and then I'm right on nine and one eight on the bottom. Now I will move this, put my thumb on the bottom here, and then I'll line up this end, right on the edge, and then I'll push this end over to nine and one eight as well. So now I have created my line, my cut line, without having to, to draw a line on it. it. Saves a lot of time. So now I have my line to cut without having to mark it with a pen and, and it's just a whole lot easier. So now I'll use my rotary cutter and just go slow and with thick paper like this, I usually go in little one inch sections or one and a half inch sections. So hold that ruler nice and tight so it doesn't move on you. All right, there we go. Now we've got our nine and one eighth uh, cut made. I'll just simply turn it this way and now I'll use a short ruler and we're going to measure six and one eight. So I'll, I'll put my thumb, I'll mark it right on the end, put my thumb under it. I'll take my long ruler and run it underneath. So we'll go to six and one eight right there. I'll pick this up, put my thumb down on the bottom, line up this top portion right on the line. Now I'm going to push it over to six and one eighth at the top. Perfect. Now I've got my second cut line. Okay, we're going to hold the ruler nice and tight. Nice and easy. There we go. So now let's do a test fit. Should be able to move that out of the way. And we can test fit this piece of end sheet. Nice, fits nicely. Right on the edge. Now once I've got it test fitted, the way we get our rounded edges, I'll hold it down, put my fingers on the ends like this. I've got it in place. And then I'll push down these edges. It's gonna push down these edges and it's gonna create that little rounded line indention underneath there. Slide it over just a hair. Now, all right, now I've pushed down those edges and I can show you what it looks like here. See how it made that rounded edge there on the, uh, on both ends. Now I'll cut those rounded edges go nice and slowly you'd rather cut too little than cut too much there we go and the other one There we go. All right, so now this should fit directly over and the curves should match for the end sheets fairly, fairly well. You can kind of see how it looks. Now that we've got them measured and cut, I'm gonna kind of take a quick look to see how it fits. Fits pretty nicely, kind of overhangs just a shade on the top. 
or on the bottom, I'll just slide it over just a hair and it has a little overhang over the uh, the block, but I'm not too concerned about that. But you can see how it, how it looks there. It has just a slight overhang. I could cut that off, but this has enough yap that I'm not concerned about it catching that fold over. All right, so now that I've got it tested, cut, corners cut, it's uh, been test fitted. Now I will glue it so I have it set up to where it's not sitting directly on the table and I'll put the contact cement just on about three quarters of an inch to one inch of this bottom seam. Let me sit back down. Now be careful with this contact cement because if it accidentally spills it doesn't just easily wipe off like book bunny glue would. You'd be very careful, take your time and should work out fine. That might be all I need. I usually do a little dot method like that, just to evenly space it out. And you can smell this contact cement immediately. Now since this tab on this uh, Omega um, cover is really small it's it's literally a half an inch thick if I mean it might not even be that thick I really only have to do enough to cover that tab and slightly past it just to secure that tab and the integrity of that tab so this this has a function for protecting that binding so that that tab doesn't lift up it kind of is a cap for that uh, for that uh, tab all right, so you can see I'm getting it all covered now with contact cement you don't need to set it immediately you need to let it uh, let it air just a, a little bit before you set it and also you need to have glue on both surfaces for the best result so you don't want this to be really really thick because you don't want it to toothpaste out when you when you set that uh, page for the end sheet. Um, so you just need to be really careful about not adding too much. All right, so we've got, that's there. I'm gonna put a little bit on over top of the, of the old tab. You can see the tab there. That's where all that old paper was. Since I, I cut the new end sheet a little larger than the original end sheet, I was gonna cover all that anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'll get a little more glue just a little bit and just be careful not to drip it on to your book block uh, anywhere you drip this stuff it's going to leave a mark or stick so just be really careful when you're using contact cement because it is not forgiving if you get it on your hands you're going to have a, a spot on your hands for a few days it's no joke all right so you see i'm applying it just like I did on the, the end sheet, really carefully. Try not to get it on the liner, because the liner's uh, lifted up right there beside it. And try to get it as far, as close to the edges as you can, and as close to the hinge as you can without really wiping it into the hinge. Because you don't want glue in that hinge ever. It's just not a good idea. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna get a little further, closer to the edge up here on the top. And I wanna smooth out some of these humps. And now as this glue uh, dries, or as it, the air hits it, it becomes really, really, really tacky. Um, and that's just a function of that contact cement. So the directions say to, to give it uh, 15 minutes, but not over two hours. Uh, you need to let it dry until glossy and uh, then carefully align the surfaces. I don't wait that long. I wait a, a couple minutes just to let it air, just so that it's still movable. Uh, because if I lay this sheet down after 10 minutes and press them together and, ooh, I need to adjust it, I'm not going to be able to. And I'm going to waste that piece of paper because it's going to destroy it, me taking it apart. So 
So we've, we've had a, about a minute or so uh, with this sheet. You can see it's starting to dry a little bit, plus the material, uh, that paper absorbs some of the moisture, so it actually accelerates the drying. Um, so I think we can go ahead and line it up. Now I turn the block facing me, and I'm gonna line up these curved edges, the curved ends. Actually, I'll probably, because this one kind of kicks up a little bit in the back, I'll put it into the hinge and get it get it aligned back there and then make sure that my uh, my rounded end my rounded corners line up really well so that looks pretty good looks pretty good now i'm going to kind of give a pre premier uh preliminary press down just to kind of lock it in place and then i'm going to close the book and check out how it lines up like I said, it did have just a slight overhang, and you can see that there, but it lines up fairly nicely um, uh, top to bottom. So now that I like the way it looks, and I've pressed it kind of in place, now I'm going to take my bone folder, whether it's, this one's a, a, a real bone folder, folder. Now you can use a Teflon folder, but I'm going to nice and gently, because you can tear this paper, if you're too, uh, too abrupt with it or too hard with it go around that tab. Now remember, this tab's only about a half an inch uh, wide. So it's, you only come out about a half an inch and you can feel the, the change of the grade. And, and especially if you, if you mark it fairly straight, if you attach the block fairly straight, then you can usually put this flat edge onto the block and give yourself a decent mark to follow. And that feels about right. So now, I will uh, use this bone folder to kind of run down that line. Because all you're doing, you're pressing, you're pressing this area down where there's no gap. Because that gap, if, it, if it's not pressed in, it won't adhere quite as well. It's gonna be going around that tab nice and carefully you don't want to tear this paper you've already done all the work to cut it and shape it so you can see now it's kind of taking shape and that's pretty close to all there is to it so now I've marked my uh, marked around the the tabs and you can see really well how it looks there it fits in it looks nice and clean that's how you do it guys there you go that's how you attach the end sheets um, this one's going to be nice and firm now at the end since we're using contact cement i'll close it and i will apply pressure right on this along this line So I'm applying that pressure just to ensure that I have a good connection with the, uh, the glue and the paper. So now I have, now one last thing I'm gonna do is check to ensure that I don't have any toothpasting out. And I mean that by seeing it squirt out the ends and making sure no pages are stuck together. These look pretty clean. Looks like a job well done. Last thing. I want to run my bone folder along that back ridge and push it down along that back ridge. Now don't push too hard because you could damage that uh, the edge of that tab, the back edge of that tab and loosen it. But that looks fairly, fairly nice. And that's how it's done. If you've got any questions, uh, please let me know. I, I'd be happy to answer any uh, that you have. Sorry this is about a 20 minute tutorial. Um, usually you can put in end sheets in about 30 minutes doing using this method now if you have a straight uh, cutting like a thing you had in school the one that had the big cutting arm that might make it a lot quicker you, you can measure cut turn it measure cut cut your corners glue put it in it might cut your time in half uh, but usually it takes about 30 minutes to do it all by hand measuring cutting rounding gluing and 
and uh, and tooling in around that uh, tab. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Again, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to leave them in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe and check the description for uh, the list of tools and equipment uh, if you wanted to try to do this yourself. Thanks for watching. God bless.